This is at Trustworthy Slav. This is at Incognito, C-O-H. CRK, Black Dot Compilled. This is the Fed Post. Feeling better, series? Yeah, I'm feeling all right now. Uh, it was a rough couple of days. So. Was it? Um, was it just when I had it? It was just like I, I'm assuming I had it because me and my girl were sick, and she pop positive on one test but you know whoever knows the whole thing again the whole thing is like who knows could be false positive who knows but uh and you could have it and be asymptomatic so there's always that too at any point but when i had it it was just like uh aches and fever like no no, like no other shit really that's what it was like for me for like the first day and a half probably uh i just had like really Bad aches and I had a fever. My thermometer wasn't working. So hey, you see what you, you just cut, cut out? <coughs> dude, he died. <laughs> oh shit, dude! I actually just clicked the mute button. That's what. Oh, that's what good. happened. I was like trying to plug and unplug my mic. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, so the first day it was just like a fever uh, and body aches and stuff, um, and like I just couldn't get comfortable anywhere. Uh, and then I told my work that, and they were like, "You gotta go get a COVID <laughs> test." And so. I got COVID tested the second day, uh, and then it came back positive. But yeah, after that, the fevers went away, and that got better. But then I was just pretty tired, and uh, then I got congestion like on the third day. Uh, that's been kind of hanging around now. Yeah, the fatigue lasted a while from from what I remember. Like that kind of yeah. lingered. You just kind of like. And then the whole time I'm thinking like, fuck, am I, is, this, is this the long COVID? Is this the brain fog? <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? But really, I'm just smacked or, or just being dumb or whatever. But, oh, uh, I lost my sense of smell, actually. That actually happened. Uh, I can't smell now. That uh, didn't happen to me. That happened to my girl, though. She was just like, no, she couldn't taste shit. She couldn't taste shit. She was like eating soup and was like, I can't taste the soup. And I'm like, oh, fuck. But, you know. Yeah, you I thought back. it was just like, I thought it was just. I thought all that was just like you get congestion and so you can't smell good, like normal right. sickness. But I just straight up can't smell anything. Like I opened up a jar of weed and put my nose right in it and couldn't <laughs> smell shit. Like <laughs> You don't know if it's Dank or Reggie. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this shit's <laughs> mid, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that shit, that shit is probably uh, kind of trippy, but it goes away. I mean, yeah. it, it comes back, obviously, but... Uh, yeah, I assume so. It's a little unsettling. I was like, oh, I can't smell. Uh, maybe I smell bad. Like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, and it smells like tied to like memory and shit and like taste and everything. So it's like, it's just a weird feeling, I'm sure. But uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that would kind of freak me out a little bit, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it ain't right. It ain't natural. <laughs> it That's for it sure. It literally ain't natural. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I guess we've, we've, uh, outer ourselves as, as people who believe that COVID's real. Oh, fuck. I might have to cut this out uh, in the edit. Hey, well, yeah. I, don't, I mean, I still don't think it's fucking real because I've never had it. Because you haven't had it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I, I was like, and I know it's probably naive or kind of stupid or something, but that's fine. Uh, I was thinking maybe <laughs> that I just wasn't going to get it. I was like, you know, it's been two and a half years. I'm not vaccinated. I haven't gotten it yet. I've been in very close proximity to people that have had it and didn't get it. So I thought maybe I had just worked up some sort of robust immune response or something, but apparently not. No, apparently not. I mean, it's impossible to never get a flu in your whole life. Oh, yeah, if yeah, you get any sure. flu, it, I really believe that these tests will just pop false positives. Or, oh, definitely. I guess, I guess the lack of smell is the unique signature or whatever. That, but I think that kind of happens with some strains of the regular flu, the seasonal flu. I think that that's not unheard of. But either yeah. way, I mean, you, you could have also had it or Slav could have had it or I could have had it. Like, well, yeah, I want to get, get that um, uh, antigen, a- antibody test. I mean. Yeah, because you never know, like, if we just were asymptomatic and had it and you know the whole thing is yeah it's not even worth like thinking about really like yeah. it's so it's i mean it's like worth a, thinking about so that i can have like bragging rights i guess just to be like <laughs> i never got it <laughs> oh. um, which <laughs> Wait, like did, I, wouldn't that mean you had got it if you got the antibodies yeah 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 yeah, yeah. if i had antibodies then i yeah i'd be unclean oh <laughs> forever okay. unclean <laughs> Yeah, I mean, COVID is, is really not a big deal. It's really just, it's just like, a you know, like any flu, really. I mean, at this yeah. point. But, 
Except yes. that shit made in a lab. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I've had like a regular flu, and I don't think this is much worse than a regular flu, like severity wise. Like, I think I've been sicker from a regular flu, but this just felt weirder. Um, like, just yeah. less natural. It uh, taint right, it taint natural. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah, it's true, because I usually have like sinus issues, and like my nose is usually the first thing that's fucked up. And for some reason, that was fine the whole time. So I was like, this is. This is weird, but uh, no, it definitely felt a little different. It definitely felt different, but uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's uh, it's whatever. I, I can't even think about it too much, really. But uh, yeah, no. But uh, but yeah, it's good. You're you're feeling better. I mean, I guess we can uh, we can just we can just do like an hour minimum because we already did our first hour. But my audio was garbage. I, I think I fucked up with the settings. Mm. So I didn't even sound that bad when I was listening back to it. Yeah, yeah, I guess with headphones it doesn't sound so bad, but uh, but I mean if we can, me and Slav were, were talking. Slav was pointing out like the difference between having two and three people is like is huge. It, yeah, it I really know. I was just, I was just gonna say like this is like first time talking three of us for me in like, in, like the last three episodes. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like oh man, it's so much easier. It's so much easier to not have to be fifty percent of the conversation. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just with two people, it's just. Uh, yeah, without without uh, you know COH on the last one, it just felt like a lot. Uh, we just kind of ran out of shit, but uh, but I feel like uh, you know, and we just went full schizo mode, which actually like definitely <laughs> yeah. worked out really well. Which, by the way, I have heard like I, it's been, I've heard from a few people I know that they like really liked us just going all in on just weird nice. esoteric schizo shit. So I'm very happy nice. to hear that. I haven't oh, listened back to it. Yeah, I think I think it was, I was telling Slav this, but I, I think uh, I think it was good for the for the for the period because in the period that like the news is kind of stuck. The news has been stuck on like uh, gas, abortion, guns, and mm-hmm. just kind of like you know when I when I left on my trip and when I came back, it was pretty much the same news stories. Uh, yeah. So you know, I think that was a perfect time to just go off on 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 your own thing, and you know, I, I think it was good. I think it was good, and I think it was the. Uh, the people who like it, it's it's a high it's a high hit for them. You know what I mean? It's the spot. Yeah, I can uh, imagine you were listening to it, just like, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll be like, honest. There were a few a few moments. I think I'm glad you guys like. I think the way you divvied up the bonus and the main was 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 tasteful because <laughs> there were a couple moments in the bonus. Where I was like, I was like, what the fuck? But uh, it was good. Like, it was what good. What does this have to do with economic populism? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there were a couple of times where I was like, you know, cool it with the schizophrenic remarks. You know, I mean, there were a couple of moments where I, where I had that. But I think I think it was good. I think it was good. I wasn't there because uh, I probably would have been slowing things down. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah, think- he would have been slowing things. <laughs> yeah, I would have been slowing them down by like, oh, what, what, what? <laughs> what <do you> mean? <laughs> it would have uh, fucked up the the momentum. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I guess the big thing now is the, the, the Roe v. Wade shit is over. It's still the same topic, basically. And I guess we kind of already did an episode about this when the when the clerk memo leaked. So I don't, I don't have too much to add. I don't know if you guys do. I guess the, the funny thing is the reaction. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's are, the news, are, right? Yeah, people are freaking uh, out. I don't know. I mean, like, I think, I think if we're, if we're, if we're, unless we're being really lazy, I feel like we could find plenty to talk about with it, you know? Like, I I mean, as far as like the actual like issue of abortion itself goes, yeah, maybe we addressed that. Um, Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there is a lot here to discuss. Um, Yeah, I think we were we were originally going to talk more about like the legal framing and stuff like that. Uh, And we didn't get around to doing that. Mm, um, and then also point. like re- repercussions or, you know, broader implications that could be affected by the legal framing or the specific <laughs> language or whatever. I honestly just didn't know. I wasn't a hundred percent certain that this would even happen even after the leak. I thought maybe something would derail yeah. it or that leak yeah. was maybe like, maybe just like thrown like, out. Yeah. A quick response thing. Uh, but yeah, same. sure enough, it happened. You know, it's funny. It's, uh, I agree, and but it's not it's not that I didn't think they would do it or that I didn't believe the leak. It's more just the it's kind of like before COVID really kicked off. It's just kind of the like, yeah, but nothing really happens kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're just like it's, um, you know, here at the end of the story. 
nothing actually changes ever we're just in stasis <laughs> and it feels it, it feels especially horrible yeah. to say that after the last couple of years right because i thought that like that sentiment just got like absolutely taken behind the shed and killed with a hammer but <laughs> yeah. um yeah i mean it's, it's not really surprising at all right because um uh the justices are stacked in in the right order well and because uh, like and because the fucking uh the uh like the the GOP has been like really really clear about their intentions for like decades right they've like had a really clear strategy with scotus uh mm -hmm. they've just been like gunning for it and it's really really clear it's just like yeah the second we have the opportunity we're going to repeal roe versus wade and it never got codified as law and rbg did the weird not resigning thing Mm -hmm. And the Democrats didn't do anything and they just let their pick under Obama just get stonewalled. Um, and for anybody here that's like that's like one of these like, oh, I'm a policy wonk, uh, big, uh, big, big politics <laughs> nerd that knows all about the protocols. Like, I don't know. There might have been some technicality that meant they had no recourse, but like, I don't. I'm not going to get into the weeds and like really look at the fine print to ch check if to see if like Democrat uh, excuses are legitimate or not. Like they always have a fucking excuse. Uh, yeah, they, like, yeah. they did nothing. You know what I mean? Um, and so it's it's kind of funny because like on one hand, everyone's like, oh, my God, handmaid's tale. We're in the handmaid's tale oh now. Oh, my God. <laughs> but like but also it's just like this is like this was a slow rolling like train crash that like we we knew was going to happen like 50 years ago you know like mm -hmm. it, this is the most predictable anything can possibly be in politics yeah that's yeah. true that they could have just codified it into law at some point in those 50 years or at least like kind of attempted to and i don't even think that occurred and i do know that nancy pelosi sent out a fundraising email referencing the uh, roe v wade decision uh like within minutes of it hitting the news Mm -hmm. uh, so that's benefit, just something yeah. yeah that's something to think about there oh yeah there's definitely one benefit of of keeping it alive as a as a wedge issue is you can drum up votes in a midterm where you've been fucking up otherwise and it looks bad for you uh this perfect opportunity or you know just just uh yeah fundraiser dollars like you know there's plenty of ways to to soak up an issue like this and keep it alive because you need it alive uh for the culture war um but yeah i mean it, i guess it is it's kind of the legal thing I've been, I was saying before of like the Supreme Court is always overturning decisions. Like if you look through the history, it's like there isn't a real specific concrete uh, set of rules for how con uh, the Supreme Court works. It's very vague. It's pretty short compared to how the other branches are, are, are set up uh, in, in terms of the description. So a lot of it is just made up as it goes. So, again, things get overturned all the time. That's like the history of the Supreme Court. Uh, it's very political. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it, there's always this feeling of like permanence, like, oh shit, this is just changed history. It's like, yeah, it's going to change again. Uh, I mean, you know, and this kind of goes <laughs> to my, like, uh, it's going to, you know, it kind of goes to my like pendulum perspective of like the right left, uh, cultural values, you know, mm -hmm. and right left politics in general. Uh, it's, it's just going to keep swinging back and forth. And, yeah. and, you know, this, this thing is, is overturned, I think from like a, like an apolitical perspective, you think, oh, shit, like say you don't know anything about this. You're like, oh, shit, does this mean like you can't legally get an abortion in the whole country now? Or like, you know, you associate Roe v. Wade with like the abortion law. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and instead of people realizing that, oh, no, this is just about states rights. So what this basically means is it's still legal in blue states and it'll be illegal in red states. So if people not want an abortion and not even in like every red state, I don't think. Like yeah, maybe yeah, and it might take some restrictions time. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, everybody's gonna and you know Roe v. Wade itself is like parsing out between trimesters, like we discussed. You know, it's like you know first trimester is okay to do it, third isn't, and you know so everybody's gonna have their own little tweaks by state of how they want to implement this and how they want to interpret it. Um, but but yeah, I mean I I don't know I just. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm trying to care about this, but it's uh, I I'm I'm shocked how little I care about this uh, compared to like when I was younger. Me too. Uh, to be honest. And just, <laughs> yeah, and it's exactly what Slav said. It doesn't feel like a big victory or a loss. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like it, it's supposed to be like this huge win for the right and huge loss for the left. And I I don't feel either of that it just feels like oh it's going to states' rights. 
all right, so people can just still go get abortions in blue states. Like, you know what I mean? It's it's kind of like, and yeah. all these people, people like freaking out and being like, oh my God, like Handmaid's Tale, like, oh my God, like can't get abortion. <laughs> like we're forced to have these these men's kids or whatever. Like you're in a, if you're a lib in a blue state, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You can still do it. So like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, it's all this, again, with a lot of this culture stuff, it's like things have to be blown up uh, in value. And again, you know, to, to get votes because that's what they're using this for. That's what they're saying. We got to hit the ballot box. So that's what that's my read of the whole thing and the reaction. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, funny, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. I I have to say, like, I <laughs> watching like just all of the absolute meltdowns and how like fucking vile people are reacting to mm-hmm, the news mm-hmm. is I, I actually te- I told you guys this over text already because I kind of just had a moment yesterday, but like. It's honestly like making me seriously, genuinely consider the pro-life position like a lot more. And like, like that's, it sounds so petty and it sounds so dumb, but like, it's, it's honestly like a a genuine feeling because it's occurring to me that like, as I said last time, right? Like, yeah, I'm, you know, ultimately pro-choice, but I think you kind of have to acknowledge that, that there's like, you know, a life there right Mm -hmm. there's a life being snuffed out there right like um and i don't know like you're saying it's like yeah i don't really like feel a ton towards this right which then i have to think oh all right well i mean i don't really feel all that strongly about like the purported right to an abortion right like i don't i don't really feel all that strongly about that Mm -hmm. and it's pretty neutral right and so then like putting that up against like all right well what about the other side that it's like killing a baby i can't really like i can't given that like my feelings towards pro-choice are just so absolutely muted and almost non-existent i have a hard time like defending my position as actually being pro-choice anymore (laughs) like it's kind of like i i feel like i have to intellectually just out of honesty, default to being pro-life. I mean, ultimately, I think it's just ultimately not an issue that sways me all that much. And at the end of the day, I was, I was, I, you kind of touched on it. And I was talking to some buddies about it the other day. And I was talking to my, to my buddy that my buddy that I actually did that uh, housing thing with, I was talking to him wow. last night and, mm-hmm. and yeah, I mean, we both kind of agree. Like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, this has been like a 50 year long thing. I, I mean, <laughs> You know, this is, you know, abortion's a meaningful issue. Uh, trans teachers grooming kids in public schools is a meaningful issue. But, like, why right now? You know, yeah, like, yeah. We're, there's a plunder afoot. Um, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. again, I can't fully follow that logic all the way because, like, you know, I, I don't want to just be dismissive because it is a real thing, right? And But uh, I, maybe it just kind of speaks to how indifferent I am about it. But, yeah, I guess just to reiterate, it is just kind of like if I am so indifferent, then shouldn't I default to, like, caring about the – child that's getting killed i don't know it's kind of funny like roe v wade getting repealed has had the opposite effect on me and i i wonder if other people can relate maybe maybe not well, maybe i think may, yeah. i i think i relate with that to a degree um because i think i've had to really just kind of honestly sit down and engage with what my fundamental beliefs about uh, you know, abortion and life and stuff is recently uh, as a result of this kind of coming up into a discussion. And previously, I never really had like actually intellectually stirring conversations with people about it and had to develop an intellectual position or really investigate mine. It was just kind of like, oh, well, you should be able to get an abortion because like I'm a I'm a kid. I could get someone pregnant. I don't want a kid. I should be able to get an abortion. And that's just kind of how it was. Uh, but then when, you know, when I sit down and I actually start thinking about it, then uh, I think morally I pretty strongly agree with, uh, disagree with abortion. I think that it's, yeah, it is uh, extinguishing a life. And I think that as a spiritual person, I don't really see how you can be, uh, think that that's good or really be okay with that. Um, I don't necessarily have a problem with abortion being something that you can access. Um, and I don't have a problem with like having it available uh, for, you know, specific circumstances. Um, and also I don't agree with like putting people in jail that have had abortions or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I do think that thinking about it at least more 
intellectually honest with myself, yeah, I definitely have a problem with it, uh, with abortion. And I don't think that I would, I would personally strongly uh, disagree with an abortion. Uh, if I was involved with the making of a child, uh, I would hope that the person that I got pregnant would also share that with me. And if not, then I would try to convince them as strongly as possible not to do that. Um, but at the same time, I think that at the end of the day, like, I think it probably should still be available. I think, I don't think it's good behavior. Uh, and I don't think it's morally upright, but at the same time, I don't think that every single thing that I think is bad behavior, there should be made a law against. Um, I don't think that, I think it comes down to the old arguments of prohibition versus uh, eliminating the causes to that. Um, and I don't think that prohibition is always the right choice in these instances. I think that it's proven not to work with drugs, with alcohol, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it, it is infringing upon working people's rights. Now, whether or not you agree with that right or you think it's valid or not or morally upright, it is something that is like generally afforded to working class people in America. And this is something that is now taking that away uh, to a degree. Like it's not taking it away in black and white terms across the nation sweepingly, but it opens the door to take it away. Right. And I think that if I'm going to be principled in my beliefs, uh, as far as how I feel about gun ownership uh, and not wanting to give any slide there. Uh, and also my beliefs about personal autonomy is that it goes towards vaccination and other medical procedures. I think that here I have to stand pretty res resolute in thinking that uh, I am pro-choice as a policy. Um, but yeah, personally, absolutely not. As a yeah. policy. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Like, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you go ahead. No, no, no. I wanted to hear what you were going to say. Um, I didn't have much to say. What, what, what are you going to say? Uh, I, well, I was, I, you mentioned the, um, the, the class element of it. And that was kind of central to like my take on it last time. And I've thought about it more. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I still haven't ultimately changed my opinion all that much because it does, uh, well, I guess, I guess I haven't really changed my opinion much at all, but it, it, because it comes down to a uh, world we have versus uh, the world we'd like to have kind of uh, mm -hmm. thing. But I've thought about it more, right? And it's like, man, right? Uh, much in the much in the, <laughs> much in the same way that none of us here would be like, yeah, dude, fucking having a strong welfare state is the is is the absolute greatest win that the working class can have. It's such a it's like, no, it's it's a it's a band aid, right? Um, mm -hmm. At best. And at worst, it's a, a pacifier to keep people from fucking busting your door down to be given what they're owed. Right. right. Um, now, with in the case of abortion, it's like, man, <laughs> I don't know how much of a win it is to celebrate like lower class people having the uh, having the ability to basically like practice eugenics on themselves because their because their material conditions are so bad yeah. that they just like couldn't bring children in like it's like it's like yeah i mean it is what it is right it is what it is but like at at the same time it's like man there's actually some like uh some definite like counter revolutionary energy going on there and and it's kind of bug person shit a little bit just to be like oh thank god i have the ability to uh to kill my fucking unborn baby just because just because capitalists won't fucking uh you know are 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 fucking me in the ass with uh with scarcity yeah uh, you know well, what I, I mean i think that's that's something interesting because it's made me think about how one thing one of the responses i have seen recently especially out of people that i know personally um you know is that people will say stuff like oh, you call yourself pro-life because you want this baby to live, and yet you won't support universal housing, you won't support universal pre-K, you won't support uh, maternity leave, you won't support universal education and health care and this and that. And so therefore you're not pro-life, you're actually you're pro-birth or whatever. Um, and then my takeaway there is, well, what if I'm down with all that shit and I got a problem with abortion? What yeah. then, right? And I think that that's a conversation that, is being brought up now and maybe brought up under, I would say maybe like not necessarily the best intentions or not really brought up as a, like actually in a meaningful way to discuss, but it is something that's being positive. That's like, Oh wait, well, if we do have to keep all these kids alive, then we need to make sure we figure out a way to keep, take care of them. Right. That's kind of the root of what that 
that argument or complaint there is. And so I, I do see that there is this kind of divide or dichotomy um, or contradiction between abortion being available as an alternative because of the fact that people are living in conditions and they don't have access to all these things as a way to kind of skirt the societal charge to actually take care of these children. Here's the um, thing, right? Here's the thing. No, because you're, you're totally right, right? There's like a couple, there's a couple angles to this, right? Which is um, one thing that just doesn't get it, uh, uh, addressed a lot is that like churches do an insane amount of supporting fucking needy families. Uh, they do an, ins- uh, an insane amount of charity. And I'm singling out charity or churches just because like churches play a, re- a pretty fucking big part in this issue. Um, and, you know, you can in, in, you know, in your city, you can go to a fucking Catholic church, Protestant, I don't give a fuck, whatever. Um, and like, you can get some support. There's a, there's a lot of services that they do. Right. Um, a lot of those people, um, might not, ag- uh, agree with expanded with like an expanded, uh, welfare state and social programs like that. Um, in a lot of ways, what we're talking about is just like forms, forms of like, uh, of like remedying the, 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 the horrible effects of poverty, um, like forms of that, that are, that are, uh, backed up just officially by the state in it's like official capacity and forms of it that are just like unofficial in charity. Uh, at the end of the day, they're, they're both like bandages and like only marginally different. Uh, and the meaningful thing is to like get people some fucking capital right is to like get people a fucking ownership stake in the fucking economy we're all in yeah. mm-hmm. right um and so yeah i mean i don't i don't really know like again cuz cuz like in that framing um like uh churches actually do like do a ton of stuff to like support babies after they're born and it's just weird that it's like dishonestly never churches in and just secular uh uh, uh secular charities um, and it's weird that that's like never really acknowledged. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And then, and then that always, that also just like that argument always reifies this stupid social Democrat premise of just like, yeah, I mean like the, the extent of our political horizons can just be like a Scandinavian style wealth, uh, 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 welfare state or something. And it's like, that's not, no, I don't like that. You know, um, does that make sense? Yeah, I think uh, I think the whole thing just boils down, like you were saying, to the current actual reality of the situation and in an ideal world. Uh, and and it just is when you know that that's the what we're dealing with. It's okay. Well, how do we take steps to go from the current situation to the ideal world? Uh, and that's where these different tactics come in, right? Like we were saying, uh, banning, prohibiting abortion, or doing these, you know, fixing these causes. And I think that I just lie on the side of ideally we try to address these causes uh and get people capital uh and not leave them out to dry in the first place and not have them in situations where they feel like they can't have a child um and that is mostly kind of where i'm at with it and i know that that's uh that's really nothing but that's really kind of just i don't have a strong opinion on this whole issue and that's that's what the opinion is (laughs) yeah um yeah, I mean, I, I I I run the risk of just like saying what I said last time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just I just yeah, in what Slav was saying, like oh, the right to abortion as like a win, like yeah, that sounds weird to me. Like a win, I don't I don't really th- see it that way. It seems more just like a like a band aid, <laughs> like a band aid to just uh, you know you are in some condition. There's a broken home, or there's incest, or there's rape, or there's poverty. Uh, and uh, having a kid is not feasible or having the kid will just bring it into a miserable existence. And, uh, you know, there's no there's no good that comes of it, really. Not 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 that there's no good, but it's just a it's just a horrible situation. I think uh, I think people deciding abortion, that situation makes sense to me. It does. Um, but that's not really like a a good thing. That's not like, <laughs> that's not like, uh, I mean, again, I think there's a sort of, I said it before already, but there's like a cartoonish representation or there's just cartoonish people who view it as like, Oh, this is me like 
exercising my right or something. It's like, what? Like, I, I don't know. The situations I've seen, like I've said, were were horrible situations where they didn't want to do it and uh, they felt like they had to. And uh, it was just, it just all around was terrible. Uh, but that's not something that's like a, it's hard, to, it's hard to talk about it in positive terms of like, oh, I have a right that I'm exercising. You know what I mean? It's, I, I can't think of it that way. It just seems like a, an out from a miserable situation. Yeah, I mean, so, the, the liberal the liberal argument for it, which is like huge of just like the personal rights thing, in my mind is like the is the weakest argument out of the whole bunch. Oh, oh like um, oh, oh, like uh, oh, yeah, women's women's choice, my body, my choice and all that. Yeah, like the classic yeah. liberal angle on this. It's just it seems just as an aside, just as a side note. Yeah. And, <clears throat> you know. Yeah, I, 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 hmm. I guess I don't know. Yeah, to me again, like it just seems like something that comes up in situations where people need to now. Say for example, I got a girl pregnant and it was the condom broke. Like I took preventative measures and it just happened and it was an accident, which happened. Uh, I would probably feel like well, I would go to take Plan B because I don't think that's murder. I don't think. Well, we talked about this before in the bonus. I think I don't think a fertilized egg is the same as a baby. Well, in Plan but, uh, B, technically, just stops the sperm from fertilizing the egg. Oh, somebody on Patreon made that comment. That was an interesting comment. They were just like, actually, it's not even like ending the fertilized egg. It mm-hmm. doesn't allow the fertilization. Uh, fertilization so to me, so. it's pretty. To me, there's a clear line there that it's that it's not killing. Like yeah, and, that's and started, yeah, but that's yeah, it's just that's an aside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's a that's a fair point, and and you know, but I think beyond that, you know, beyond that point, I think I would feel some kind of obligation of like, all right, well, you know. I don't really want to do this, but I'm kind of like you kind of have to own up to what's going on. You know what I mean? Kind yeah. of situation. Uh, that's how I would deal with it. I'm not saying that's how other people should deal with it. That's how I would deal with it. But yeah, uh, I just raised the kid. You know what I mean? But the other thing, too, is that I have enough money where it might not be great. It might be a little rough, but it's not insane to do. It's not impossible. Now, there are other situations where it's really not possible and it's i mean it's always possible but it would be like horrible it would be miserable in that situation i would understand someone making that choice but that's the way i view it i don't expect other people to think about it that way again this 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 whole thing like the arguments are always the same like i've heard these arguments for decades and it never changes and nobody changes anybody's mind so it just seems kind of like pointless to talk about it um but i mean you know i don't i don't know what else to say about it i mean this this well one thing that's interesting is uh, that there's there's a lot of hullabaloo about how this is going to, you know, go down, how it's going to affect other landmark decisions, et cetera. Um, mm-hmm. And there's a lot of talk about Clarence Thomas, um, who I know is a favorite of the good old boys. Um, but there's been a lot of talk of, uh, of he apparently made some statement about this brings into question other decisions um, and I think they involve right to privacy, uh, as well as which, which generally kind of just covers like gay marriage and contraceptives. So I think that's, uh, another argument that's coming up of hyst- in hysterics of people that are worried about, is this going to impact gay people's ability to get married now that this sets a certain precedent, uh, and is it going to impact ability to access, uh, contraceptives, and I think that those are concerns that are valid. I think a lot of the right does want to ban contraceptives and does want to reverse gay marriage. I don't yeah. think that's a leap to say that. Um, no, no, of course not. So, and there, there was, what's interesting, okay, this is sort of an interesting thing was there was talk of, you know, I was just sort of like, yeah, you know, this is just going to states' rights. This isn't really putting a nail in abortion or putting a nail in the pro-life side. It's not like a... You know what I mean? It's not as big as people were blowing it up to be. And then somebody was saying, yeah, but this is how we'll get a step to federally banning abortion is what somebody was saying to me. And I saw a bunch of other arguments where people were saying we want to on the right. They want to uh, ban divorce, ban affairs, ban fornication, ban premarital sex. Now, to what degree people are like joking or whatever, that's always up in the air. It's the Internet, obviously. But But wouldn't uh, all those things take like an actual amendment? to achieve um and not just like that wouldn't be something that the supreme court could just like up and decide one day 
that we're going to introduce new bands, you know. Right, that's true. Yeah, it would have so to be. So those like are things past. that would have to go through like Congress and the Senate. And like, I personally don't ever see that actually going through mm-hmm. Congress and the Senate anytime, unless there's just like a massive overhaul of who comprises the Senate and uh, Congress. But yeah, I don't see, I don't know that I see that happening, but I was wrong about the Roe v. Wade thing to a degree too. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think uh, Amy Barrett and Clarence Thomas are both Catholic. Um, I don't doubt that they would probably be into the idea of uh, of banning contraception and uh, contraceptive. All right, well, it would be. I think it would be more. It would be uh, whether or not you could get employers to to pay for that shit, right? It would, to 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 have that shit supported in insurance. Um, and uh, yeah, in, in, in gay marriage, I guess same same thing. I, the the thing is there though that like the legal case uh, for Roe v. Wade was always really weak. Like that's it's kind of the whole thing is that like it's really really easily uh, it's it's basically all you have to do is just like disprove that uh, the concept of a a, a basic right to an abortion exists and like that's not really a hard thing to do right um because like it's certainly not a god-given right um the uh the 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 argument of just like yeah kind of making it like a human right it's it's always been a little shaky i think they what is it it's the the 14th and the i'm not i don't have a good uh uh, understanding of of the history of the court. To, to be honest, it's a way into this water and make myself sound like a retard. But I don't really know that the situation in that nuts and bolts way is the same for for gay marriage and for um, for contraceptive. I just I just don't know if it's um, uh, politically viable because you know I mean people can have sentiments as much as they want, right? I mean I I I agree that I think that there is probably a, a pretty decent. Uh, amount of interest in in going against both those things on the right um but like a sentiment is very different from like a political viability um and even with a majority on the court um i don't know i don't know i mean gay marriage was decided in the supreme court so Mm -hmm. yeah that one would be more doable and you know obviously i don't care about this issue um, I don't know what it would fix. I guess Not that's my sort journey. Of, yeah. That's sort of my <laughs> mentality with a lot of this stuff is like, say you do ban abortion federally. Like, I don't know what that's really solving. Again, like there's going to be people doing abortions anyways, illegally. Um, but that's sort of my stance across the board with banning things in general. Um, like, like everything, basically like guns, like everything. Drugs. Yeah, I mean, I don't really, but I don't, um, I don't, I don't think that that's like a particularly... I mean, not to be not to like get into the weeds about it, I guess, but like it's still going to lower the amount of people getting a, a fucking abortion. And if you buy into the premise that it's murder, then like then like anything you can do to lower the the uh, the number of murders happening is is something you you got to pursue, you know. So so I, I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, the the um, the, the prohibition argument, the, the argument against prohibition doesn't seem particularly strong in this case to me, but, but I get it. Um, yeah. Yeah. As far I as mean, like just a, a broad, like political conviction. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's, it's definitely clear that they, they want to ban it federally. I don't think that's, that's in dispute, uh, how they'd get there. Like CH said, that is, that's a lot trickier than Roe v. Wade or the gay marriage thing. That's, and you know, the nature of, the way our legislation is set up is that big sweeping changes like that are hard to do. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I also said too, that this, this stuff is not on the front of my mind. You know what I mean? Like I'm pro choice and I, I, I I don't know if they were tomorrow to just be like, we were federally banning abortion. I would just be like, that's kind of, that's kind of dumb, but I just, I I wouldn't really, I don't know. I wouldn't really feel too much about it maybe because i'm a dude maybe maybe that's why but like i don't know it seems like there's there's some other bigger shit going on in in the last two years like this this big economic decline that we've been in for two years straight um you know it just i don't know that seems a little bit more pressing to me and uh you know it's just it's just shocking to me just like how how bad things are economically and that abortion and gun control are like the big topics and it just it just blows my mind. It blows my mind. And it's just like, 
I don't know what it would take for people to to care about these things. I don't know what it would take. I, I have no idea what it would, what it would take because apparently the worse things get, the less these these matters are on people's mind. The more, and I've said it before, before in 2019, like one of our first episodes, I was like, when this crash comes, there's going to be worse culture war. It's going to happen. Uh, and, you know, that's just the way it works. But it, it's so like, it doesn't make sense. Like why... Why, when things are worse around you economically, why did why would why doesn't that become more pressing in people's minds? Instead, the the opposite happens; it becomes less pressing, and all these other things become more pressing. Like if they ban or a uh, uh, gay marriage, like really, like I who gives a fuck? I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Like I think that's stupid, but I don't really give a fuck if they do. Like I I don't know. It's hard for me to like. It's hard for me to wrap my mind around this shit. It's hard for me to not be like upset by this. Uh, but do you but think that's that, how I really feel. Do you think that it, it has to do also just with the fact that like it's the economy is an abstract concept and it's hard to get yeah. people fired up about an abstract concept? I think that people are fired yeah. up about it, though. I think that people, I, I think that. everyone that I know and I work with, every time I go in a grocery store, I hear people talking about how expensive it is, how expensive gas is. Everyone that I know talks about that. Uh, and is frustrated and affected by it. It's just that people just don't see there as any avenue to change that. No one's ever discussing actually fundamentally changing the economic nature of the way that we live our lives. And no one's actually ever given the rhetoric, the language, or any even the framework to understand how to begin doing that type of stuff. And so like this just seems more like something that you could do. I mean, people have been at least talking about abortion for 50 fucking years. Uh, it's something that seems a little bit more like low hanging fruit. Like it's there that you could maybe actually do something about these cultural things because of the fact that they're the things that are dangled out in front of us. And they're the only things that are really presented as real options. And so people get this like conditioned response where they know that, oh, I'm not actually going to be able to get anything to really change my economic reality at all um, or change the way that my life is materially constructed. And so these are the things that I'm going to pour all that energy into. Um, I think a lot of it goes with that. And I think that, I mean, also you think about every time I talk to someone about, oh, yeah, I'd like to see X thing happen or X, you know, X type of economic proposal. People are like, yeah, but that'll never happen. Um, or and you say, OK, well, like what if someone ran on it or whatever? Oh, well, they would kill him. OK, well, <laughs> everyone's thinking that literally everyone I talk to all the time, all, it says shit like that. So, of course, no one thinks that there's any way to actually do anything or change you know, the economy. And also, like you're saying, it is this big ab abstract thing, the economy for most people. And so it's like, how do you make that something tangible for people? How do we get people together to have a coherent sense for how capital circulates through the economy and then how that creates the social forces that basically construct our cultural lives as well? Uh, and how do we get people to see that in workable, movable blocks and things that can be changed, that can be turned, that can be moved around and and fidgeted with. Because right now it just seems like these are things that are set in stone and we're never going to be able to change them regardless. Yeah, I mean, it, the way the, the way the midterms are shaking out is that it's it's the Democrats are, what was that guy who was like shaking in his video? He was shaking, like tweaking out. Uh, fuck, I forget his fucking, I don't know if you guys saw it. This weird ass lib dude was like tweaking the fuck out and just saying like, we need to fucking have a massive turnout to vote Democrats to, <laughs> to, to vote these people out or whatever. <clears throat> of course. Which, you know, it seems like the way this is shaking out is like the Democrats are rallying behind protect abortion rights mm -hmm. and the Republicans are going to be running on, you know, guns. And uh, it seems like those are the two the two avenues and i think no one's really going to run to either of them to handle any economic issues because they're both complicit are the they going to run on guns republicans yeah it, or is that just or like the, the teachers the, thing too i guess the teachers I, thing. the thing that yeah, yeah. the thing that That's i get is the teachers thing mostly yeah. i mean yeah though, though to be fair to be fair like i do think like i mean they're gonna they're they will run on inflation um they just won't run on like anything meaningful about it yeah um, yeah they're just not gonna do anything about it really I, in my opinion i know i know america was on here before and was like oh they can you know cut spending whatever but they they spend a fuck ton they spend a fuck ton so i mean 
I don't know. It's it's not something I can see really uh, panning out. I mean, they vote for all the fucking bailouts. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I don't know. It's, it's hard to imagine them, like, all of a sudden being uh, against that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess the teacher's thing. The teacher's thing is a pretty salient uh, 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 thing that I think they'll run on. And the guns thing, I think they've upset a lot of their, their base because I just saw a lot of people on the right, like, really – pissed and black pilled about the GOP. They're like, they're they're They can't save us. You know what I mean? Like because the GOP kind of like voted yes on some, uh, what was it? The reasonable background check bill or whatever that was going on after Uvalda. I think the Republicans just kind of went along with it because I guess it, they would look crazy if they didn't, I guess, uh, yeah. cause it was so marginal. Um, so I saw a lot of the right was very upset with them about that, but maybe the teachers thing, they still have some gas with that. Um, more than the gun issue, but again, yeah, it's it's the teachers, the guns, and the and the abortion. I think are the the things that are getting people to vote uh, and kind of going to be you know the main things in the news cycle for this year. Um, but yeah, I don't know. None of that really moves me. If I don't hear anything about, I'm becoming a lot more uh, rigid. Uh, if, if I don't hear anything about not voting for bailouts, and I don't give a fuck. I don't. I don't really care. Um, doesn't doesn't move me at all. So they're, they're going to, you know, they're going to, the Democrats are going to use this to push people to get them to vote. And I guess it's going to work on some people. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't, do you, I don't do know you, how, I don't know how people can hear the same shit every fucking year and still, still be moved by this. I don't know how people like, I don't know. We live in different universes. I don't know. We just do. I don't, I don't know. That's, that's all I can say about that. Sorry. What you, were you going to ask? Do you think that, do you think that, uh, that, uh, what, 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 do you think that, uh, Democrats still just like don't have a chance in hell going into the midterms or do you think that the flip, the, the, the script has been flipped a little? Uh, that's a good question. I think the abortion thing is going to give them some gas. I think the the guns thing will give them some gas. Uh, but again, you know, as much gas as it gives, it's really like, I don't think it's just me that feels like this is on a loop. You know, I sometimes I feel like I'm alone in this, like, oh, I'm the only one who feels like this. But I don't think I am. I think a lot of people feel kind of like, what the fuck? Didn't I hear all this shit before? Like, is, is anything really changing? Like you said at the beginning, like, uh, I don't know. I think getting Trump out was the last election, right? That was like a big turn of energy for the Democrats. And I think that one has more gas because it's like four years straight nonstop of Trump is Hitler and like we need to get him out. And just people almost wanting like just to to, to, to mute the TV, just like, please shut up. I don't want to hear this anymore. Like it's almost like that type of energy more than like gas. It's just like I want this to stop. Um, so that that seems more powerful and more of a of a, a turnout uh, producer than than this shit. This shit just seems kind of I don't know. But maybe the Roe v. Wade being overturned. I mean, I never expected that. Really, if I'm being honest, I didn't really expect it. But uh, I mean, prior to that leak, um, I guess I should have. Like you, like you were saying, Slav. But like, I don't know. This doesn't really. Uh, I don't know. This doesn't really phase me that much. So maybe it phases other people. Uh, what, I don't know. Coh, what do you think? Do you think? Do you think this is uh do you think it's set for the Republicans or do you think it's like flipped it now? Uh I don't know, man. I think that uh, most people are already pretty set in their sides. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean it's really hard to shake that now. And so I think it's gonna invigorate uh both of the bases in a pretty equal way. Um I don't know. I think that I may have flipped the script a little bit because I definitely know I've seen a lot about it. Like if I go on personal social media or whatever. Uh, there's just hysterics, you know, there's all this about killing women and blah, 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 and handmaid's <laughs> tail. And uh, dude, don't that. get me started on the killing women thing. Holy shit. Yeah. And there's a lot of that. And there's a lot of like, keep your Bible off my body and all this stuff. And so I don't know, there's, I think it invigorated a base. Um, but I don't know that it's like getting people to jump the fence or anything. Um, I think I think most of the way most people are just kind of set or they're just not going to vote. You know, what I mean, I think people that I don't know that it's going to move a lot of people, um, but maybe it will. Because what what are they going to what how what's voting going to do about this? Right. You're going to have to have Democrats that are coming out running on actually codifying it in law, into law, uh, which I haven't really ever even seen, actually. Um, I mean, people talk about it all the time, but I don't even think that's actually a thing that people do is run on that. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know, man. I just don't. I don't know if it matters, really. 
I think that they're just going to kind of put in whoever they want to. Yeah, I think I think the Dems were dead meat uh, before this. I think the COVID thing just kind of like and the, and the, yeah, the gas crisis, the inflation. I think they were just pretty much cooked, and uh, now it doesn't seem as uh, clear. Um, which probably is by design. Um, what do you, what do you think, Slav? You think it's you think the you think it's pretty even? What is the the Dem versus the GOP thing? Oh, as far as the uh, the midterms, the mid-terms. Go, I really don't know. Um, the hard thing about it is that, as Coh said, you know, like you've you've certainly heard a lot about this stuff. You see it in the culture, right? Um, and it's really hard because everyone's super overcultured and propaganda works, and everyone's super propagandized. But it's also like it's 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 unreality. It's not real, right? And it's completely monopolized by one of the parties. And so, uh, I, I I just really can't say. I think I think at the end of the day, the the unsexy uh, the unsexy and safe bet to do is to say the Republicans. The Republicans have had such a strong advantage going into this just because the the hard, concrete, bedrock shit of, I'm, you know, at least 10% poorer than I was, you know, not too long ago. Right, right. Um, I, I, I think I think you just stick with that. You know what I mean? Because because it's impossible to actually gauge how much this like psyop barrage is actually affecting people. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. the people perpetrate, but perpetuating the fucking psyop are also the only people giving you a glimpse into like what the temperature of the room is. Yeah. Um, and and I would also yeah. say like after after everything we've been through the last several years, it's just like. I do kind of start to question the the power of propaganda. Um, so, like, how much people actually are eating this shit? Up. So, I'm gonna go with I think the the Republicans are are still coming out on top big time. Same, but yeah. I just I wouldn't be too surprised if if we had an upset. Yeah, really? I think the uh, I think that like you're saying, Slav, like the hyper reality of the propagandized like narrative versus. Uh, what's actually taking place in day-to-day basis and behind the scenes and such. I think that's something that's a pretty big, um, a big thing that this Roe v. Wade decision in general has kind of demonstrated for me in a, like a glaringly obvious way. And it may be like an, an oversimplification or something, um, but it seems as though there's a disconnect on, you know, the cultural narrative and take on abortion and what actually is taking place. Um, and like, for instance, I never thought that I didn't think that we were in a place where over, like I thought over people being afraid of overturning Roe v. Wade was kind of like, that's kind of laughable. Cause I was like, we don't live in like this, you know, 19, you know, eighties period, more puritanical type of Christian ish led society as much anymore. Uh, and it's like that type of conservatism is like not something that is culturally prevalent. Um, in a meaningful way politically, like right now, as far as turning the levers of things. Um, but at the end of the day, that's just what happened, um, you know, and it didn't have anything to do with the cultural narrative. Um, and so that's just something that that's I've been thinking about recently. It's just the disconnect there. And what's 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 the argument? What What's the because you were mentioning this before. Uh, uh, what's the killing women argument? Like, what is what's the argument about? I actually don't know. Oh, it's, I, I think it's just talking about uh, like uh, cases in which, um, well, first of all, all right, in a very real way, it doesn't mean fucking anything because what it is is people just like scrambling to have the most overstated angle on this laid out. But the truth that does exist in it is basically, you know, the idea of med- a medically necessary abortion, right? Um there, I, I believe there's a couple of states that have what are called trigger laws, right? For where you know, this, as soon as as soon as um, Roe v. Wade was was overturned, um, it, it would trigger all these laws banning, and these are the state it, it, banning abortion and and all these things. And these are the states that have the most hard line angles on it, right? And I believe there may be a couple of. Uh, may be a couple of these trigger states, trigger law states, where um, medically necessary abortion is banned. Um, I don't really know that for sure. Um, the amount 
of the narrative that's being taken up by people screaming that like women are going to die. Um, and I don't even necessarily know if like this is the only thing they're even specifically talking about. I, I think that I think that when people are saying it, I think it has a lot more to do with just like these abstract concepts of like the the totemic woman is being attacked by these bad guys of history and women are going to die almost as if they're just like believing in just these like magical bad vibes floating around or something. But but yeah, I think I think that's what it's actually addressing is like the, the medically necessary stuff, which which I for the record, I mean, I don't really I, I can't say that I that I know a ton about the case against against medically necessary abortions. But like, I can't really say that I oppose them. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, my my initial thought was like that thing you were saying before of like, oh, people having abortions by like forcing it like uh illegal like doing their home home abortions or whatever or like uh deliberate miscarriages or something going wrong there i that's think that's I definitely thought. i think that's definitely part of it which you know yeah i mean wait I, I, I didn't hear you there what you say like uh when, when you were talking about like oh people doing illegal abortions at home like not even leaving the state or maybe they can't leave the state or whatever huh. and they just sort of like do it at home and kind of force a miscarriage and something goes wrong there which could totally happen uh that's what i thought that was but like um oh as far i as guess killing, i guess oh yeah i guess that's the really obvious thing right yeah i mean i'm yeah i mean it's one of those things that like you know yeah i mean i don't want to sound cold or whatever but like it's not really killing women is it huh oh well yeah i mean i guess in a literal sense it is but like again you know these things are all on the margins and i mean i know it sounds cold but like I'm I'm focused on like the bigger thing, the bigger, broader thing that's sort of slowly killing everybody, right? That's sort of breeding the death around us um, in various forms, in various ways, through crime or drugs or or everything, you know. So that's like that's the bigger thing I'm thinking about. And you could find with every issue that there's ways that people are dying from it in in their own way or whatever. But like I don't know, I'm focused on like the broader thing, and that's that's I, I guess that sounds like I don't really care but uh again you know again that's how i feel about all the cultural things is that there's marginal things happening on the edges and you could make cases for the damage being done of all these things but like what's what's got the biggest numbers and the biggest effect is the economic thing to me that's very obvious to me but uh i mean you, you would you guys agree that there's situations where there's like families where you know forget even the rape and incest because again like how often are there even really like illegal abortions and like somebody dies from it and like how often does that really happen i'm sure it happens but like well i guess we the would numbers really are not staggering because, because the conditions aren't yeah right so we'd, we'd, we'd be imagining it right but like you know through, through rape and incest pregnancies like i'm sure that shit happens i don't know the real numbers you know i'm kind of talking out of my ass i don't really know the real numbers but i don't know if it's like super common you know what i mean and we're talking about just red states where they can't do it and it's not allowed Maybe they don't maybe they'll write in the condition that it's OK in those situations, extreme situations. But I don't know. What what are we talking about numbers wise, uh, which I, I, you know, it sounds cold to just put it all in numbers. But like, well, it's low. It's because I know that like the total percentage of abortions that are either medically uh, necessary or recommended and or from rape or incest is less than one percent of abortions really okay see that that sounds about what i'd imagine it's actually funny uh, someone texted me this my buddy actually texted me the numbers on this last night so i can literally just bring it up right now um here we go uh all right uh 92.330 percent of abortions are for no uh no no listed reason uh, the elective, uh, 6.268%, uh, the woman aborted for social or economic reasons, uh, 0.66%, there was a serious fetal abnormality, 0.294, the woman's psychological health was threatened by the pregnancy, 0.288, the woman's physical health was threatened, 0.85, the woman was raped, 0.65, the woman's life was endangered by the pregnancy, Actually, reading which, this out loud, the, the numbers... Which study is this? I don't even fucking like, know. I actually, I don't even trust these numbers, to be honest, because none, 92 for no reason just means to me that they had flawed data gathering. 
But that's what I was. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, so never starts. mind. Never mind. But well, which 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 the real lesson here is that I should never really try to bring uh, statistics onto the show. Ever. Yeah. First time we tried <laughs> to fact check each other. And yeah, just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but no, but I'm, look, I mean, I'm just going off gut and like what COH said, like I assume those situations are freak occurrences. Uh, just yes. by the nature of what's happening. You know what I mean? It, there's not rape and incest happening all the time. And the pregnancies from that is not all the time. So I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm just saying that the numbers can't be that high. Now, as far as like economic reasons, I mean, if we're all acknowledging that like the cost of living is going up and inflation is making your money wor- le- worth less and everybody's getting killed everywhere with, with the economy, I don't I don't get how people can acknowledge that and not realize that that's going to affect things like abortion rates right like i yeah it is there's always this thing of like like it feels like the right acknowledges a lot of economic uh turmoil and distress if it's about getting a democrat out and getting a republican in but if it's like okay but what about all these other issues you care about doesn't that affect the things you care about like having a family like all this other stuff and for some reason then it doesn't it doesn't matter that everybody's fine economically actually so it's, it's everybody like picks and chooses uh opportunistically obviously but uh but i mean do you do you believe that's a real thing that there's situations where people are like they're 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 struggling and the kid happens by accident Uh and they just can't they cannot provide a decent life for the kid like you believe that's uh, that's a thing obviously right yeah of course right right and then i think what happens here is like we get into the moral philosophical debate of is that situation or that predicament does that outweigh the life of the unborn kid? Which, again, nobody can do this. Third trimester is illegal across the board. Like in Roe v. Wade, it's illegal. So we're talking about first trimester. So does the first trimester outweigh that situation, basically? And that's a moral conundrum. So you're going to get a bunch of different answers about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, to, for me, the first trimester doesn't outweigh it. It doesn't. <clears throat> but, yeah, but you know. for me, it's like that's I don't know. If that's really a, the fair comparison is weighing it up against the first trimester because it's also the entire life that's that would come after the first trimester. Yeah, I mean, the, weigh it against. I, I think that there's a sleight of hand going on when we when we when we frame it as having anything to do with the trimesters, right? Like that, and that's that's kind of my whole point of just like of just like you know the the when life begins thing is just a rabbit hole. Right. Yeah, of course. Uh, we we we, ha- we had this debate, and it's yeah. like, yeah, I, I think that you know, f- couple first weeks is not is not the same thing as a baby. I don't think that, but we disagree on that. But like, this is where people get into the this is the age old debate of like, how do you weigh one predicament over the other, and everybody's going to interpret it differently. So it's kind of just like it's just kind of stuck. It's just kind of like you know what I mean. Like I I don't see a, a resolve for that. I don't. I, I get. Do people like con- ch- change their minds about this? I've never seen anybody change their mind about it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Have Have you guys seen that happen? Like, somebody convince somebody else about this? Like, I've never seen that. I think I've been swayed on it more. Uh, I used to be more staunchly pro-choice, and I am now much less firm in that, um, and have re-examined the the whole thing um, and formed some personal opinions on it that I think may differ from where they were for me, I don't know, five years ago. Um, mm-hmm. But also five years ago, I was 20 years old. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's part of it too. Um, and also, yeah, I don't know. I think that also five years ago, I had probably thought less in general about a lot of things from my own perspective and was kind of probably operating a little bit more on just, uh, you know, just given cultural narratives and stuff that I uh, was just kind of tossing around and and taking not entirely without question, but definitely uh, taking more for granted than I do now. Uh, and so I think that had a lot to do with it. Are, are um, we saying, are we saying, do we know anyone who's changed their opinion on abortion? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anybody who has. Personally. I know quite a few people. And to be honest, like I kind of feel like I actively am right now. Uh, I, I don't think it's that, I don't think it's that difficult, you know, cause, cause I do think just the, I mean, I, I think that, I think that the idea that like in a, an unborn uh, fucking whatever you even want to call it, an unborn child being aborted, the, the, the idea that that's a living thing, it's like it, it, people try not to give that oxygen because like for good reason, because like if you have that stick with somebody, right, and it just mm-hmm. clicks in their mind, 
the debate's kind of over in yeah. a lot of cases, right? Um, and so for the most part, I think the strategy is to just is to just to just suffocate that argument. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I know I know a, a, a pretty decent amount of people that have been that have been swayed uh, personally. In which direction? All, all in one direction or pro life? Uh, I don't. Gotcha, I can't gotcha. say that I know anybody who's been swayed to pro choice. Actually, yeah, um, I don't but, know. That that's, that's something that would be easy to do. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's hard to do. Because yeah. again, I feel like I feel like it's just one of these things of like the second it just clicks that it's a living thing. It's like over. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 As a spiritual I mean, I, person, it's very hard to uh, to be like strongly pro-choice in any type of way once you once you start to actually approach it on spiritual terms. And I but think, that's, like, yeah, that's I why think I think the, it is like a spiritual thing. Like, because because I don't I don't think that early couple thing a couple weeks is like a living thing. I don't. I, well, it's I, a metaphysical. It's a metaphysical, right? Like, it's it's not necessarily right, right. spiritual. It's also philosophical, but like. It's metaphysical. Right, right, right. And, right, right, exactly. um, and so, yeah, and thus in that way, like there isn't there isn't a clear answer. And like the scientism behind basically being like, it's not it, it's not a real thing. It's been debunked like that's that's bullshit. And I think that that shows like an intellectual laziness a lot of people have. But I think it's I think it's uh, to, to basically just say that, like, it's like proven science now. Oh, I think yeah, that, of course I, th- I think yeah. that, you know, if, if you want to say, well, that's not really life, like, um, that's fine. I respect it if you're like, you know, it's a philosophical disagreement. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, as, opposed, as opposed to being like the scientific studies are in and, oh, man, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson face here. It's over for you guys. Uh, it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, even in the Roe v. Wade decision, I think, like, I read it in college or whatever, and I think, like, they're having big debates of, like, oh, when the heartbeat starts or when the brain activates, or, oh, they're debating all this stuff, and it's clearly, like, not understood. And it's not It's not really, like, decided on even in the scientific realm, really. Not really. No, fuck no, dude. Um, so I guess, I, I guess that's a good point because I guess I would just phrase it as I don't value it the same as a life. I don't. That's. Yeah. I think that's – maybe that's the better way to phrase it. Is, like, I don't value that – four weeks or six weeks the same as i would a baby you know what i mean i just i wouldn't do that i, w- I personally would i can't i can't uh equate the two in my mind but uh, i mean if you were like sitting to me with a gun to my head and i had a full-grown baby like out of the womb in my right hand and i had like a three-week fetus in my left hand and you said i had to drop one of them I'm dropping the fetus, <laughs> but like, <laughs> yo, the trolley experiment, uh, Fed post style. There we yeah, go. <laughs> but that doesn't, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that doesn't mean that I don't think that it's alive and, and you know that. Should no, I appreciate, I appreciate the the the, uh, the, no, the I, forthrightness. I agree, and I I agree with both of you. Yeah, like yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna weigh it the same, right? I don't think that I don't think that framing it as weighing it the same as a baby. Uh, dispels the argument like at all um mm-hmm. but uh but yeah like i i like i like agree if i if i was at the if i was standing at the edge of a cliff and hanging <laughs> off the edge was a fetus right an unborn baby and and next to it was a fucking two-year-old baby i'm saving the two-year-old i'm sorry yeah, that's a no brainer to me. But if yeah, I can, I'll option. try to save both of them. I was just, dude, I was just going to say third option. I'm going to go find the mother and then she can help me save both of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah, I would say this, this of all the cultural issues, this is the most sticky, sticky one and like, yeah, most complicated one, honestly. Like, because everything else is, no, this is the only one that gets into real deep, like, philosophical questions and metaphysical questions and like we well, started debating about like free will like when when does that even happen with, with like in conversation like that's weird like we got into some weird shit like this is this is one of the stickier ones mm-hmm. and it's probably why i'm more like it, it also builds to my apathy because i'm kind of like yeah you know i'm kind of like yeah you, you view it that way like i don't know what to say like yeah i guess, yeah. I guess so like i don't know it's kind of hard to it, well, you yeah, can, it's, it's easy to I can at least understand, like recognizing the point in a debate where you're like, oh, OK, so like we could just get in the roundabout and just go around forever. And so I'm yeah. just going to yeah. check out of this now. And like, I'm not going to have an answer. I'm just going to check out of this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, especially when you when you, the point you were making of like, if you admit that no one like 
well, at least in the scientific realm, there is no like clear answer on this, you know, in the, in the spiritual realm, maybe there is a clear answer, but like, at least in the scientific realm, like this, well, because there's the, no answer for because this. Because the like, premise of it doesn't make any sense. Like, it's not something that you can. Yeah, it's an intangible of, thing. Like, it's a it's a fundamental question about the nature of a life and reality. And like, yeah. that's not something that you can just put into a box scientifically and have a clean answer on. Of course, of course. Yeah, it's, it's like just, a lot of things. Science just isn't science just isn't the tool for everything. And like, and like, scientism, just like worship of science, is is what leads people to like act it is like it's like that that like the uh, just the idea that science has anything fucking at all to do with religion in the first place um it's just like honestly bullshit um so yeah i think to do with religion in in who who, who, in what way just the idea that they're like competing oh 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 i guess uh yeah competing yeah 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 i get what you mean there's there's that's probably also why there's a lot of like uh, yeah, you could ways say to overlap them. Yeah, you could say it's like to me. I think it's more like Venn diagram, right? Like I think there's yeah. like there's things that uh, people understood in metaphysical ways uh, that now there are scientific material ways to understand those concepts that uh, you can point to as tried and true methods for understanding it uh, that have better helped to contextualize metaphysical uh yeah. notions already and then i also think that there are like things that science there has no way of answering that are squarely in the realm of metaphysical and then i also think that there are things that science probably answers in a more cohesive way for us to understand as material beings uh than metaphysical concepts can for specific well, problems like illnesses and stuff like that well yeah i mean that's just like it's just that like symbolism isn't really gonna like answer every question that like yeah. that doesn't that doesn't mean that they're like yeah i mean they, they just they do fundamentally different things and yeah, yeah there's like certain places where perhaps their explanations have like some marginal like overlap i think that's um, where you why you give them posited as competing views though because people will be like oh well back before science was a thing pe- religious people used to believe that x thing was caused by blank or whatever i mean it's just fu- it's just funny because it's right, so right. thoroughly straw man and like yeah. it makes me think of like the big bang theory was like come like it, it, it that was that was formed by a, like a catholic priest and it's also interesting that like <laughs> oh, yeah. that's not science i mean it's it's a scientific theory but like at the end of the day it's a theory just like the theory of creationism is a theory Right, like well, none, yeah, but, none but of I those mean, things. But are I mean, like it is, it is used to inform, you know, uh, it, it it's foundational to a lot of other stuff within. Uh, oh science. yeah, yeah, definitely. So, I'm just saying that that just because it's this is quote in the realm of science doesn't mean that it's any more provable in any way uh, than the religious concepts or metaphysical concepts either. This specific thing, which is the bedrock for understanding from a lot. Well, in fucking A, it's sense. not it's not in opposition at all because again, it's the product of someone who was a fucking Catholic priest. You know what I mean? So like, it doesn't like it's just it's it's it runs it runs parallel. They're just not the same fucking thing. Um, and it, it kind of drives me nuts that people are. I think the in the old days, you know, religion was the science, and I think the the scientific like institution sort of replaced it. I think in like the social like the public conscious maybe yeah um, right think, like like scientists are act are treated like like a priest cast yeah, yeah. And, and a political the, institution and the, you know there was a point where you like you'd go to the religious authorities to figure out the nature of the universe you know that you'd ask them like scientific questions in a way or there, there was kind of a blurring of it of like or even just like the old philosopher like greek philosophers like the, the questions of spirituality and, and questions of science were really kind of close because we didn't know shit. Like, yeah, we really also, didn't know shit. Well, and also for, like, the vast majority of history, like, most science has been done within the church. Yeah. Right, right, right. And Like, yeah, like, exactly. li- like literally they, you know, uh, yeah. So, I mean, like, the, yeah, the I mean, idea the, that they're even separate is, is a fairly new. Yeah, the church was like the state. The church was yeah. like everything. The church was like exactly the, the, the uh, all authority. So, obviously, like, public consensus of knowledge which is what we consider science now. Like that's, you know, religion was that at the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking of that, uh, the AI conversation you guys had. I wish I could have interjected some stuff, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I, I, and you know, you know, you know what we do? Is- we, we listen back to it and we do a commentary episode of the <laughs> <laughs> Just DVD commentary. Oh, Lord, that should be a bonus. That should be a bonus. That would be so fucking funny. <laughs> and that would be funny. Just me ad libbing and dubbing and just like, yeah. <laughs> me just listening back to me and just sighing, like, oh man, I didn't make a good point there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll be the final, it'll be the highest form of this medium being realized. And oh, the yeah. podcast will just end after we do it. And we'll finally put the nail on that coffin. That may be the one good thing that we do. All right, that was part one of our episode. If you'd like to listen to part two, you can find that at patreon.com slash fedpost. Thanks for listening.